Also from my side, good evening to all of you. Uh, nice to meet in person again and also to all of that uh, who joined online. Um, yeah, I want to talk to you about code quality today and why it's important and how we can make it a habit and integrate it in our data workflows so it's, um, it's easier to follow the standards and keep code quality in our project side. <clears throat> so why is code quality important? Are any inputs from your side? Why should we keep code quality high and have an eye on it? <laughs> to save ourselves from uh, cross-site scripting injection <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, for example. So in general, um, of course, it makes our code much more maintainable, easier to extend. The readability is also a big topic of, that, that can be um, ensured with um, code quality tools and makes it easier for us to follow code that is not written by ourselves, but by uh, other colleagues. Uh, I think we all have worked with legacy code and um, with methods, with hundreds of lines of code um, we have to dig into. Um, yeah, and in terms of Magento, also if you want to bring your modules to the marketplace, it's also a prerequisite to uh, follow the coding standards defined by Magento. So that's also a point that it's important to follow them when you're working with Magento and want to um, release your module via the marketplace. <clears throat> so what tool set are we using? So uh, today I want to focus on the static code checks. Um, there we have the three tools in place with the PHP code sniffer, which focuses mainly on the coding standards. For example, um, how is line indentation handled? How long is the line length that is allowed to um, placing the files. Machete 2 coding standard also is reporting you uh, prohibited methods and so on. For example, if you use file M time or something like that, it's also complaining about that because there are methods in Magento you should use. Um, the second thing we are focusing on is the PHP mess detection. Um, this is mainly and, and big parts of the readability, so it reports code that has very excessive long methods, excessive long methods list, complexity of the code. Um, it also reports unused code parts and so on. And the static analysis tool in last place um, also can show you up when you have unused properties of variables um, or if there are any undefined variables you are using in your code. Um, in the Magento context, it is also showing you when you are using service or not using service contracts as intended by Magento. So if you save, uh, for example, an entity via its model and not via the service contract, it is complaining. Yeah, so a handy tool set that gives you um, possibility to check your code against all this, this stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, the key question is, how can we deal with legacy code? Legacy code always has a technical depth that can't be removed at once. It would take you days, weeks, or even months to go through the whole code base and uh, deal with that legacy code that has, yeah, <laughs> violations of the rules defined. <laughs> so we have to find a way how can the code style checks uh, be passed without uh, addressing the depth at once. So we, we want that the, the style checks report new issues that we introduce to our code so that they don't come to the code base and are checked into version control. But the old issues that are in the legacy code must not block our um, deployments. 
Um, so how can we handle that? Anyone already had experience with that, how we can do that? You can uh, define the baseline. Exactly. <laughs> so baseline creation um, gives you the opportunity to uh, exclude the, the old issues that are already in the code from the uh, checks. Those baseline generations are um, supported out of the box by the static analysis tool and by PHP mass detection. Uh, for the code sniffer, it's not um, included out of the box, but there's an extension available for that, so it can also be handled and it's no big deal. <clears throat> So, uh, we split the quality checks up in two parts on our side. Um, on the one hand, we uh, wanted to give our developers a tool that uh, provides the possibility to run all the checks at once, because it can be really annoying to run all those tools separately all the time. Um, and with that CLI tool, we provided it is possible to scan specific files or folders that you can pass as parameter or also uncommitted or staged files, as it is also done by the pre-commit hooks we will uh, talk afterwards about. Um, the big uh, challenge we had was how can we run those checks in a consistent environment, because we are running all those uh, instances on different Magento versions, different PHP versions, and for that, it was not so easy to come to a conclusion. How can we run it in a consistent environment that is um, the same as the shop is running in? So we decided to just take the Docker image where the shop itself is also running in, um, bootstrap that, and run all our checks inside this Docker image. So we have a consistent PHP version, Magento version, and it's all run against the same environment as the shop is set up with. <clears throat> yeah. Additionally to the um, manual checks we can execute, uh, we also want to ensure that no code uh, that is not following the coding standards uh, is making its way to the version control. So we are implementing pre-commit hooks. Those are hooks that run on every commit that is, is um, run against the version control. And if any of the checks is failing, uh, the commit is aborted and the code doesn't make its way into the version control. Yeah, as already said, the legacy code is covered with the baselines. So no old issues are breaking the builds and the commits. And to uh, make it easier to, to set up and maintain those free commit hooks, uh, we are utilizing Captain Hook, uh, which is an um, integration for Git hooks with PHP. It offers a simple JSON configuration where you can define what checks should be run. Um, yeah, it offers you a broad tool set so you can define which actions should be run. There are prepared actions or even CLI commands as, for example, the code style checks that can be run directly, um, and also conditions that define when an action should be executed. So um, on our example, I also will show you afterwards a, a short live demo. For us, it's only interesting to, to uh, check our code pool and not any third party extensions because we are not responsible for their code. Um, so we have the conditions in there that only the directories with our code are checked. Yeah, and if it's necessary, um, Capnook is also very extensible. You can write your own actions, your own conditions, and so on. Um, and yeah, wrap it all up in, in one class, for example, that can be executed in the um, run of the of the hooks. <clears throat> yeah, and, and one last thing um, that could or should act as an additional quality gate is the integration of the um, quality checks in the pipelines, the CICD pipelines. 
but this would go too far to, to dig into that today. There are, for example, the, the linked open source solution you can download and utilize it. Um, yeah, in, in fact, it's, it's a big uh, advantage to have it in your pipelines on, for example, merge requests to just have it in one side that there is something not um, implemented as it should be, but makes makes code reviews uh, way easier because you don't have to concentrate on such issues that can be reported automatically. <clears throat> yeah, and with that said, um, I already would jump into the live demo. <laughs> so just have to quickly switch over to um, my machine. Are there any questions meanwhile? I'm going to take time to the pipeline process. Uh, this, this pipeline depiction was just uh, an example that is available um, as an open source on, on GitHub. So it's not our pipeline we are running. So I can't can't tell you how long this one is taking. <laughs> but for for our a sorry, a minute, thirty seconds. Yeah, the Something code like quality that. checks with with the static analyzers tool. Yeah. It's it's rather quick. So. So you can execute uh, in, in, in GitLab and any other pipelines. You can run them in parallel. And since uh, GitLab is mainly based on Docker containers, you're just mm -hmm. putting on two, three, five, how, whatever you need. And um, let's say PHP Stan and PHP CS only for our code base takes about 30 seconds, something like that. And it's rather quick. Um, and we mostly integrated in. Uh, Merge requests. So whenever a merge request is done, and we are executing the tests. Yeah. So I already um, ran the code checks as an example against the code base without any baselines. <laughs> so you can see there are quite a couple of of things that um, are not implemented as it should be. Um, yeah, I already generated the baselines for PHP Stan and for um, Mass Effect to meanwhile because it takes quite a while to run it. Um, and as I said before, for PHP Code Sniffer, it is not uh, supported out of the box. So this is the one I will run now just to show it. So when you install the package that was linked in the um, slides, you get afterwards this additional report class that you can uh, pass to the command, and this will generate you the baseline file, so you can create a baseline that is also taken into account afterwards. <clears throat> yeah. and you see, that's, that's the reason why I ran the others, others uh, before because it's quite annoying to wait for it. The good thing is the baseline generation is not needed that often. So it's, of course, it can be, you have to regenerate the baseline when you address some of the old topics and remove some of your technical depth, but it's not, not run in daily business. Katarina just asked a question. Yeah. Maybe you yeah. can meanwhile click on the chat and we can. So as a developer, do I need to run the checks in the console or is it possible to integrate it into PHP store? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it is possible to integrate them in PHP Storm. So PHP Storm is then um, reporting you the issues directly with, with highlighting. Um, what I wasn't able to, to check yet, I think there is a possibility, but I haven't tried it out yet, that the checks are also run um, via Docker or something like that, that you have the, the consistent environment. Um, it, cr it creates a, a lot of uh, latency. You can do it, yeah. but uh, it creates too much latency okay. if you're doing the live checks in, in Docker. So it's better to set up the, yeah. the project with the correct versions. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it is possible. Um, 
to have it explicitly with the version you're running the shop in, you can run it with the uh, CLI tool and check it there. <clears throat> okay, so meanwhile we have the baseline created. And when we now run the checks, um, the problem is when I run it now again, it will also take quite a, a lot of time. So, mm -hmm. But let's just, uh, sorry. CD out here. <clears throat> We see I've, I run it against one module now. Um, I'm right, this module should now follow the coding standards. I've prepared it afterwards to um, have some errors in it. And then I also would like to, to show you how it is um, working with the, with the pre-commit hooks. Um, yeah. Uh, also saying that maybe uh, the, the pre-commit hooks with Captain Hook are also configured the way that they are run inside the Docker image. So we are here in the same environment as with that CLI tool. Yeah. So we see we have no errors here. The good thing um, with that tool is, or maybe let's uh, first check it with the non-compliant code. Um, when you run the checks in the pre-commit hook, which we will try now, I just add all this, this code and try to commit it. <clears throat> Is this high term? Yeah. And can you hit the command plus? Does it? <laughs> I think we tried yesterday. Yeah. No, it is not taken into account in the screen share. Is it a little bit? Yeah, you can try it if it does more often. No, uh, I think it's the latency. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we see in the, the pre-commit hook, um, <clears throat> the first check we are running here is the uh, PHP coding standards check. Um, and what I personally uh, think it's a little bit annoying is uh, Captain Hook is terminating when the first check uh, is failing. So it is not executing the subsequent checks after a failed job. Um, we can try that now as well with our script. So it also offers you the possibility to pass here as a parameter, the stage parameter, uh, which is doing basically the same um, as the pre-commit hook. So it's only taking uh, the staged files into account. <clears throat> Uh, and the advantage on this one is it now runs the PHP CS checks, which will cause the same errors as we now see in the pre-commit hook, but also go on with the other checks. And uh, so as a developer, you have the possibility to address them all at once and don't have to fix the PHP CS checks, then try to commit it again, and then you have again the failing checks of PHP and B. So yeah, so we see here, first we have the, the errors from the code sniffer and afterwards, yeah, PHP Stan is complaining about two minor things and also the PHP and D chats are failing here. <clears throat> so it seems like a missing feature in, in Captain Hope the, uh, that it that doesn't execute. execute. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe there is a possibility if um, I haven't um, checked it yet, but it's that way it is a little bit annoying. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll call it back now the clean code. Um, and when we then edit it all again, the commit should also, uh, when I now try to commit it, I assume we won't have any checks there um, executed as successful except of the PHP linting, because we don't have any changed files now. But they are all in, in version control. <clears throat> but it really slows down the commit, right? If you are using um, these pre-commit hooks. It, 
is slower than normally right now. So I don't know if it's related to, to the share or if I have to uh, start over my Docker locally. <laughs> so I have I have the um, feeling that sometimes Docker just needs okay. a restart, um, at least on Mac. OK. But it took now about yeah. 20 seconds or something. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I feel it's, it's due to the, to the Docker uh, spin up. So yeah, as I said, now we, we have skipped all the checks because uh, no of the PHP files was changed. And that's maybe one thing um, I can show as well. That's, that's the configuration for the Captain Hook I mentioned before. So you have different um, messages or the different hook in there. So you have here, for example, the, the complete message hook. Uh, it's disabled for now, but there, for example, the possibility is given that you check the uh, commit messages that it meets the line length of maximum 50 characters in the subject and 72 in the body. Um, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, the only the only checks we have active right now are the pre-commit checks. So we have here the PHP linting. So that's that's action provided by Captain Hook out of the box. Um, and below there, you can see the conditions I've mentioned before. So we only want to check the the code tool of source app code Phoenix and source app design front end Phoenix. So the files have to be in one of those directories. Um, and for the coding style checks, we additionally configured that we only check the staged files uh, that have either PHP or PHTML as an extension. <clears throat> so that's the whole magic that is going on in the Captain Hook configuration, and it's pretty easy to set it up. Documentation also is quite good on it. I have one question. Um, <clears throat> in, in the top, the run mode, where you define that this is running Docker, is this yeah. standard functionality? From, uh, um, The config the run mode Docker is uh, out of the box. Yeah, the run executable we defined here is just a wrapper where we check uh, in our image what uh, image is the one we want to mm -hmm. to start. Um, but yeah, the the rest is is um, given out of the box by Captain. Yeah, and. And yeah, that gives you the possibility to have your code checked on every commit and make sure that no harmful code and <laughs> misleading code is, is coming to a version. Thank you very much, Andreas. Any questions? I also noticed that it's as a, I also noticed myself that it's uh, stimulating your internal uh, reward center. <laughs> <laughs> you're writing a module and, and writing a commit afterwards or uh, doing a commit, and you get no <laughs> no errors. <laughs> so um, that's also a good point. <laughs> using using an approach for uh, better code quality and, and doing checks like that, automated checks. The only downside um, you had that before, what I noticed is that if you're, uh, for example, doing uh, um, or uh, have an error in a commit message and you're doing an amount afterwards, uh, you have to run through the through the check again and have to wait the 20 seconds. So that's <laughs> that sort of thing. Or another example, if you have to uh, edit a file uh, which has a lot of yeah. legacy code in there and you just want to edit a one-liner. Um, the whole file is uh, failing actually, and you have to fix the whole file so you can commit it. But it's only happening if the uh, errors are not in the baseline. Yeah, sure. But it happens if you have old it code and uh, definitely it wasn't touched for a and long time, and you change something in there. And sometimes I already had strange behavior on merge commits. That's, that's also so a thing. There are a few things that you have to take in, into account. Mm -hmm. Is to think about, but generally speaking, it's, it's a very good approach uh, to automate it and um, get clean code into your repository. Yeah. If you want to avoid the long waiting times, at least in Grum PHP, there's a special flag that you can pass uh, if you enable that. Mm -hmm. So it will do the commit without running the checks. But of course, if you enable that, the risk is always that somebody doesn't want to wait. And mm -hmm. exactly yeah, that. it's also possible if the git commit flag no verify. It's also mm. uh, circumvented the, the whole <laughs> commit hooks. 
<laughs> but yeah, <laughs> Should, shouldn't be the way to go. Yeah, that's right. Then you will be caught in the merge request. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's why we are using both. <laughs> 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 a soft and a hard check. <laughs> First strike, second strike. But the next time that person merges your changes, will recognize it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I think um, that way, um, so this static code analysis is also a very good teacher uh, for, for yourself. Mm -hmm. So you can learn a lot of, of best practices and PHP then always finds some errors, uh, whether it is wrong return values, if you treat return values wrong, or if you don't consider, okay, there ca could be not just an array, there could be also null or something like that, or you are passing the wrong parameter. So PHP stand is really, really helpful. It should be used by everyone because it finds actual bugs. And um, the Magento coding standards is to me very valuable as it reminds you, especially in the um, templates to escape your stuff because you, Forget this <laughs> just yeah. too often that you are just echoing something, but you can never be sure what's in it. And uh, the coding standards just enforce you to properly escape your output. Mm -hmm. And that can save your ass at the end of the day because you never know when something gets injected. So just another question, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, as Alina is asking, how about JavaScript or other languages? Can we include other libraries to check such languages? Yeah, there is the possibility, for example, the ESLinter or something like that. Um, but I'm, I'm out at that point as a backend <laughs> developer, <laughs> to be honest. So I think there's ESLint and Chessman, mm -hmm. but I never used it myself. Mm -hmm. Me neither. <laughs> but definitely a thing to, to have a look at as well, yeah. <laughs> Didn't, <laughs> didn't the Magento coding standard add lately a JavaScript linting as well? Mm. Not sure. But what's what's nice for PHP then is the extension by expert, bit expert. Yeah. Yeah. Where they do many Magento specific mm. checks. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's also the, the extension where, for example, the service contracts and so on mm. come from. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then thank you very much. Thank you. Whoa.